Hello, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of What in the World is Going On. I am your host, Brad Hurst. Uh, I, I've wanted to do a video on the Great Apostasy uh, based upon an article that I read out of the Christian Post talking about the, the great falling away and the complete collapse of the evangelical community, not only in the United States, but abroad. But there are some events that are actually going on inside the Middle East that I think take precedent. And since this is an events-driven, uh, shall we say, uh, broadcast, uh, I want to take us back to the Middle East and look at what's actually going on. Now, if you have been with me over the number of years, you will know that I sincerely believe that when you look at Daniel chapter 2 with its head of gold and Babylon, chest and arms of silver with uh, Medo Persia, and then the uh, chest, or shall we say, the belly and thigh of bronze, uh, I see that as being the Greco-Roman period, and then that being divided into the two Islamic empires of the Turkish Sunni Ottoman and then the uh, Persian-Iranian uh, Shia empires, eventually being uh, dissolved and broken up after World War I into the uh, ten states of the modern Middle East, and those ten states being uh, Turkey, Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and Kuwait, and with uh, uh, those would be the first eight, and then you got some possibilities with uh, Bahrain, Qatar, and Yemen. Uh, I would go with uh, Bahrain and Qatar. I'm not really excited about Yemen, but uh, essentially we know of at least eight of them and the possibility of, of two others. But I think it's pretty safe to say that uh, that's a, that's a far better fit than what we see in what is often known as the uh, as the Roman narrative. Right? And we've also gone into Daniel chapter seven in the past and talking about you know essentially the same concept, but instead of uh, elements in a, in a statue, we have animals. And the reason why the animals are given is because the animals themselves actually kind of help us to determine what the boundaries of the empires are going to be with the the uh, Asiatic lion representing re representing Babylon, and then the Syriac uh, uh, bear representing the territories of the Medo-Persian Empire, and then the leopard, which was broad spread across North Africa up into Europe, uh, as far as into Spain and to France and 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 uh, uh, even further north, and then cross into Central Asia, uh, we can see the, the the leopard is a good fit for the Greco-Roman period, and then we have a beast coming out of uh, the Greco-Roman or uh, beast coming after that that basically conquers everything, which Rome didn't do. Rome never found its way into into Persia and, and half of the old Greek Empire as well. Uh, so uh, uh, Rome Rome doesn't fit everything. Rome, the Greco-Roman period is all one section altogether there. And after that comes the Islamic period with the fall of uh, Constantinople in 1453 AD. And then uh, the two Islamic states break up. And just like in Daniel chapter 2, they break up into ten toes. And it's in the days of those kings that the God of heaven is going to set up his kingdom. Uh, we see also in Daniel chapter 7, we see seven powers coming out of what I believe the beast of Islam. And uh, um, when those powers are in place, they're represented as, as ten horns. And then out of the midst of them uh, comes forth a, a, another little horn that grows and waxes exceedingly great and exalts himself and makes war against, uh, against the saints and blasphemes the God of heaven until you see a point in time where the thrones are set up in heaven and you begin to see the saints starting to, to arrive and then the rest of the vision is, is basically explanatory. So... Um, so with those ten toes and the and the ten powers, uh, the ten horns, I believe those are the same thing. We're told in Daniel 2 that in the days of the kings of the division of the what I, what I believe is the Islamic powers and the states that we've, we've already named, it's in the days of those kings that God's going to set up his, his kingdom. But also that there's going to be, in addition to that, there's going to be a period, period of time when someone's going to rise among them and is going to uproot three of them. And that's also a hairbinger for the nearness of what I think is is the what is, what is the rapture. So um, uh, we talked about those. We talked about them as being uh, Turkey, Syria, Lebanon, Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Kuwait, with alternates of Bahrain, Qatar, and Yemen. And I favor Bahrain and Qatar. Uh, but uh, uh, there are things that are going on in the Middle East right now where we may actually be watching the uprooting of, of three of these taking place. So I'm going to go ahead and turn over here to my right, and I'm going to read off some articles from you, and then do a little bit of uh, analysis in the process, and then and then uh, we'll finish up this this video. So um, uh, bear with me as I read through a number of different articles, all right? So here we are. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, um, Lebanon. 
And I've been watching Lebanon for a period of time now. My wife is actually grew up in Lebanon and she's, um, she's very familiar with the area. She has a love there. Uh, this comes to us uh, from a think tank, a, m a military think tank inside of, uh, inside of Israel. It's called the Begin Sadat Center for Strategic Studies, bar Leon University, Beza Center Perspectives, paper number 1831, November 26, 2020. Uh, I read this and was really interested in it and have just kind of kept it in my back pocket until now as it seems, it seems as though things seem to be uh, underway. Uh, executive summary, despite their desire to evict sectarianism from their country's corrupt government, Lebanese civilians are likely to see increased tensions across religious lines. Iran will continue to back Hezbollah despite its regional, weak, its regional weakening, while Turkey and Qatar will play a bigger counterbalancing role by increasing their influence on, Sun on the Sunni community. All right, it continues, uh, this article continues, uh, the, the weakness of Iran and Hezbollah at this particular moment, along with the withdrawal of the Gulf states, from Lebanon presented an opportunity for Turkey to enter the stage. Saudi Arabia and its Sunni allies in the Gulf have largely given up trying to influence the, Subini, the Lebanese Sunni community, despite their common position against Hezbollah. Turkey and Qatar stepped up to fill the gap, allegedly providing weapons to Sunni communities in the north, as well as aid following the Beirut explosion. The aid is aimed primarily at Lebanon's small Turkic community. The article continues. If Turkey, now listen to this, if Turkey does elect to accelerate its push for influence in Lebanon, the likely result would be a new civil war. I want you to hold on to that. An impoverished and sectarian country with massive illegal weapons caches and multiple foreign powers Exerting influence within its borders is an ominous scenario. To counter a Turkish expansionist drive, Iran will probably try to increase its aid to Hezbollah. It will view Turkey's expansion into Lebanon as a step toward Ankara cementing its presence in neighboring Syria as well. And the article continues. It says, The Ottoman Empire once ruled Gaza Israel, the West Bank, Egypt, Libya, Yemen, Syria, Iraq, and Lebanon. These are considered the near abroad by, Turk by the Turkish regime. <laughs> this is important, okay? It is better poised to succeed in Lebanon, Iraq, and Syria. In other words, three horns, all right? It would also grant Turkey access to a border with Israel from which it could threaten the Jewish state and champion the Palestinian cause. Then we have this statement coming to us from an op-ed piece. Lebanon is on the brink of another civil war and Western media are covering for the culprits. This is an op-ed written on 10-15-2021. Remember it said just a, a minute ago that if Turkey wants to get involved in Lebanon, it's most likely going to result in a civil war. Well, as Turkey seems to be exerting its influence, Lebanon, it says, is suffering under a collapsed economy deteriorated to the brink of civil war yesterday as gunmen ambushed a group of protesters in Beirut, leading to at least six deaths over 30 and over 30 seriously wounded. Now, now go ahead and, and look at me right here, all right? I, I went on YouTube and I actually saw some of these articles. And to be honest with you, I was not, I was not aware of some of these articles. And so uh, I saw that this, saw this this morning and recognized uh, what we were uh, actually looking at. And it was interesting. You can actually see this this uh, protest put forward by Hezbollah. We have hundreds of Hezbollah fighters marching through downtown Lebanon, and then snipers who were positioned on top of buildings and inside of inside of buildings began to shoot at these people. And nobody knows who these snipers are or where they're from. And some are even suggesting that. They, they have a foreign origin of some sort. So someone's stoking violence inside of Lebanon with, uh, with the intent of trying to get a foothold in, in that particular area. So uh, let's just keep, uh, let's just go ahead and, and continue to watch that area. So let's look at some other articles here. This time we're going to go to Iraq. Okay, we're going to look at Iraq. And when we look at Iraq, what do we see here? This is from Al Monitor, 10-18-21. Uh, Turkey's spy bus escalates rivalry with Iran. 
says, Iran and Turkey are increasingly rivals in the Caucasus and in Iraq. The Turkish-Iranian rivalry is likely to heat up beyond the Caucasus, namely in Iraq. Ankara, with its, uh, which had relied on its Turkmen kinsmen and Sunni Arab groups to counter Iran's influence in Iraq, saw its leverage badly damaged amid the rise and collapse of the Islamic State, while Tehran managed to improve its ties with both Sunni Arab and Shiite Turkmen groups. Uh, continuing uh, same article, now the outcome of the October 10th elections in Iraq offers Turkey more room to maneuver while making things harder for Iran. The Sunnis emerged as the second largest force in parliament and the Turkmen entered parliament as a, uni as a united force. While the conquest alliance linked to Iran-backed Shi uh, Shiite militia suffered a major setback, all right? And so, so now, uh, if you look at me here, it says, now you can see that uh, Turkey now not only has a military foothold up in northern Iraq, but they also have a political foothold inside of the Iraqi parliament, and they're going to be able to manipulate things more to their liking and advantage as they begin to wield influence inside of Iraq. Now, let's turn again, look at one more uh, set of articles here. Uh, this is actually regarding Syria. Uh, this is uh, saying uh, Al Monitor, 10-15-21, uh, Erdogan threatens fresh military campaign in Syria. The Kurdish-held town of Tel Rifat stands out as the focal point of the potential new crisis in northern Syria as Turkey threatens another military offensive, offensive amid discords with Russia and the United States. Continuing with the same article, we have run out of patience. This is Erdogan speaking. It says, we have run out of patience regarding uh, certain areas in Syria that have been the source of terrorist attacks on our country. We are determined to eliminate the threats originating from those areas. Erdogan said on October 11th, referring to the Kurdish-held Tel Rifat, which lies to the south of Maria, where the attack took place the day before. Okay, and we continue on. This is the last of our article. Uh, it says the Anatolia, or the state-run Anatolia news agency named 11 villages around Tel Rifat, where it said the terrorists had deployed heavy weapons such as multiple rocket launchers and tow Katu, uh, Katusha uh, and Grad missiles and were using them to frequently strike Azaz, Alabab, Maria, and Afrin. And if you remember... Back in our article that we were reading uh, from the uh, military organization that wrote this article, it says that, they, that uh, the best place for the Turkish state to succeed is Lebanon, Iraq, and Syria because they would get a foothold uh, on the doorsteps of, of uh, Israel and be able to threaten Israel from there. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, do we have three horns in the process of being uprooted? Well, it's hard not to say that, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Do we have somebody, a person who, you know, started off as, as, a, as a soccer player and became mayor of Istanbul, then became prime minister of Turkey, and then became the, uh, the president of Turkey and is now the most popular figure in the Sunni Islamic world, so much so the, the whole states are afraid of him? Well, I mean, from Indonesia in, down into Africa, down into Ethiopia, across Central Asia, this guy's a rock star. So, uh, you know, let's just watch and wait. But uh, the, more we, the more we're watching, the more we see things beginning to fall in place. And if you're reading, you know, if you're trying to find yourself a European Antichrist coming out of, you know, the European Union or something like that, I think you're reading your Bible upside down. So uh, let's go ahead and, and just keep watching and waiting. And, and as things begin to unfold and develop, we will take the time to, out of our busy day, to uh, to uh, get these videos to you and get going. I mean, we've got things going in, in the works now for Daniel chapter two, which I think would be very helpful uh, to help explain things not only to you know people in the United States, but if you live in the Middle East, you know these these prophecies are concerning you and the lands that you live in, and we want to get these to you as well. So, have a good day and thank you for your time. Good day.